and friends. This is Under the Arch Sports. I'm Eric, and today we're going to take a look back at Mizzou's thrilling overtime win against the Florida Gators. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and Instagram. Guys, that was one of the most dramatic wins Missouri's had in a long time. Uh, final score 24 to 23 in the overtime, and man, a lot to unpack here. And I think you have to start with the defense. You're telling me that the same Missouri defense we saw in the first half of the season gave up 23 points to Florida, and it took overtime for that to happen? That is astonishing. That is an incredible turnaround that we're seeing out of this Missouri defense. Uh, there's no question. Steve Wilkes has saved his job. You can forget about that. Uh, I don't think too many people are complaining any anymore, but you can put that to bed. Um, so you have that. And the, the run defense specifically, my gosh, this is a team that halfway through the season was giving up 280 yards a game on the ground against Florida with, with the, a top 10 rushing attack and a mobile quarterback. We had questions about that in our preview video. 93 yards total rushing for Florida. That's fantastic. Emory Jones had 45 of those yards. Think about that. That means running backs, just you know, traditional running plays, less than 50 yards allowed by the Missouri defense. Bravo. That is outstanding. And guys, uh, you know, there's – it's just – unbelievable i i don't I, i'm borderline speechless on it i mean um uh, chad bailey just he stepped up in such a big way um he's taken the playing time away from devin nicholson and it's made a difference uh blaze aldridge he's turned it around isaiah mcguire has uh has really stepped up on the defensive line and in this game against florida uh, dj jackson true freshman playing for a caleb evans uh out of corner he did great. Um, you know, very encouraged to see his performance and knowing that he's just a freshman. Missouri had just four penalties, 27 yards. You can live with that at, all day. That's great. Missouri had been struggling with penalties. So seeing that, that's huge. Um, and then you look at the offense. Uh, it did enough. Um, the offensive line was just completely overmatched. Uh, at the beginning and uh, the play calling was uh, let's call it questionable. There were uh, a number of plays where, you know, there were fakes one way and then a pitch and a lot of slow developing kind of trickeration misdirection type plays. And Florida was ready for those. And Missouri just doesn't have the offensive line for that. Uh, you, you know, when you don't have the offensive line to compete, which Missouri didn't, early on anyway, uh, what do you, what do you have to do? You have to go with quick passes and quick run plays, like a, like a dive right in between tackles. Those are, those are so quick that there's not time for the Florida defensive line to just take over and make a play. Uh, the, you know, the faster the ball is out of the box, the better. And Missouri did a little bit more of that. And Tyler Beatty's just a monster. He did absolutely nothing for about two thirds of this game. And then all of a sudden, Tyler Beatty, 27 carries, 146 yards. Did not think that was going to happen middle of third quarter, but Tyler Beatty, just a monster, guys. Um, and then Connor Bay's like, what can you say? He's, it's obvious he's not healthy. Um, I, I, anything that, that he does as far as him being out there, I, you all, you can't blame him too much because he's not healthy. And what's he supposed to do? Does he say, coach, I don't want to play? No. So you can't fault him for going out there and just not being mobile and not being, do it, not being able to escape. If you don't blame anybody for that, that's drink. But, I mean, they got the win. And that's all that matters. Um, you know, Missouri's offense – did enough, as I said, you'd like to see a little bit more, 286 yards of total offense. 
uh, you're not going to win a whole lot of games when you don't put up 300 yards of offense, 165 yards passing. That's the biggest thing. And rushing 121 yards total uh, at when you include all the sacks and all that, that's, that, that, there's room for improvement. Let's call it that. Um, you know, one final thing I want to talk about going back to the defense is they gave up 261 passing yards to Emory Jones. Uh, they had the trick play where Jones caught the reception for six yards. So 267 uh, total passing yards allowed, which isn't a great number, but keep in mind, about 49, 50 of those yards on one play at the end of the half where Missouri's only standard was that they didn't get in the end zone. You know, they had the four linemen rush and then there was no one else even in the picture. So that play got a lot closer to the end zone than I think a lot of us were comfortable with, but take that play away. Cause Missouri didn't care. They gave up 40 yards. You're talking about giving up 212 yards of, uh, of passing yards to the quarterback. That's, that's great against, against a, a potent offense. You take that all day. When you guys, when you look at the overtime, uh, you know, you, you thought Florida, after they got that touchdown, you thought, oh boy, here we go. Because the Missouri offense had not been that effective, let's face it. But then Tyler Beatty, two runs to the left at a touchdown. Wow. And then the call to go for two. Uh, in the post game interview, Coach Drink said that, well, we had to go for two in the second one, so may as well just do it now. Yeah, that's true. I also kind of think that's a, a bit of a way of saying uh, I don't want my offensive line out there any more than it has to be. Cause let's face it. The offensive line was overmatched. They they're not as talented as the Florida defensive line. It is a mismatch. Um, so avoiding that matchup as much as you can makes sense. And I think that's what uh, I think that's a bigger factor in drink going for two in the first overtime instead of waiting for the second one. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's how I looked at the, at that decision to go for two. Uh, so, what's this mean for Missouri? Well, Missouri's six and five, bowl eligible. They are going bowling. Um, uh, seven and five on the table. A lot of people had seven and five as kind of what they were thinking, and it's not going to be easy going against uh, a pretty good Arkansas team, but. It's on the table uh, and it could happen. Um, So that's good. And it's progress in terms of the team is improving throughout the year. And you've got the ability to sell recruits on, you know what, we are building, we are improving, see how we're piecing it together more and more as the year goes on. We're getting there. And it's a lot, an easier sell for recruits. Um, Finally, an all-time troll job by Coach Drink after the game. Uh, if you remember back to last year's game, it was on Halloween, and after the win, and uh, you know all the, you know all the brawl at halftime and all that. Uh, Dan Mullen completely failed to read the room and showed up as Darth Vader for his press his presser. Well, this year Coach Drink showed up. And at the end, put his hood up, whipped out a lightsaber, said, may the force be with you, and walked off like a boss, sipping his Diet Coke, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's getting play ESPN, USA Today, everywhere as an all-time troll job. So, so well done to Coach Drink. It's even, even funnier, uh, given the fact that this game may well have finished off Dan Mullen as me filming this. He hasn't been fired, but wouldn't surprise me if by the time this video is out on YouTube, <laughs> that he is fired either way. I don't think he's coming back. So it's a little bit of dancing on Mullen's grave, which is you know, hilarious because Mullen's a tool. Anyway, that's all I've got for Mizzou's overtime win over the Gators. Thanks for checking out this video. Keep it here to Under the Arch Sports for uh, for everything with the Cardinals offseason, more Mizzou, Blues, and all your favorite St. Louis sports teams. See you guys next time.